Okay, so this is just one in a random series of SketchUp to vCarve tutorials. Um, it's meant for people that are into SketchUp and into vCarve. Uh, it's not meant to be a basic or a to, you know a DIY simple tutorial. So this is the drawing of a template. This is obviously in SketchUp. I do TD, 2D only on those on those templates. Um, then what I do is I flip them to the way that the board is going to go into the CNC machine. So in a case like this, now all the dimensioning is not going to go with me anyhow over to VCarve. So I don't worry about it. I just like to have it dimensioned on the same one. When I view it on a screen, I like to view it, view it horizontally. So I'm just clicking on the tabs. Uh, here's some other stuff that are on the drawing itself. But when I go to CNC, I make sure that number one, it's facing the same way that it's going to be going on to the machine itself. And then I also zoom out to make sure that there's nothing else out there that is going to carry over. So if I could just go back to my tab, it's automatically going to where I want it to go. I'm going to do a file, save as, and then I give it a name, whatever. Uh, I keep a, okay, I save it. Then I go to VCarve, and I'll just go ahead and I'll do a new one. So here's the width. I, I do a job size, 5.5. That's how wide this board is going to be. That's how wide it is on, uh, if I can find that, on SketchUp as well. You got 5.5 by 11 and a quarter. And the reason it's 11 and a quarter is I want, I'm making two templates out of the same a board and I want each of them to be five and a half by five, five and a half, but I have to consider that there's a saw curve involved. And so therefore I make it five and a quarter and then I draw this little guy in here. You'll see how I deal with that in VCarve. But, so I've got five and a half width, height of 11 and a quarter. My thickness is set here, it's 0.75. I clicked on okay. Now I'm gonna go up to this icon here, import vectors it'll find, I'll go to that file that I just saved up here, saying open. Uh, here's all of my settings. You're welcome to pause and look at those settings. I have no idea how I got to those, but trial and error. It always comes in offset a little bit like this. So I go to this icon here. I go up to here and say center it, which it now just did and I close out of that little window. It has everything selected, I don't want that. So in this case, what I would end up doing is clicking, shift, click, shift, click, shift, click, shift, click, on all these items and whatever else I wanted on there. I would go to the paths, those I want full depth. The, the board is uh, 0.75, so I'm gonna go to 0.8 because I use a spoil board under it. I'm gonna let the passes stay where it defaults to them. I'm going to call it something like slots, slots, calculate. It warns me that I'm going to go beyond the depth of the board, which is correct. And then when I just kind of shows you that, I just go right into 2D view again. Then here I'm going to start going into some better, finer focusing. So I'm going to go up to my zoom and I'm going to zoom in on just that area there. It gives me a little better chance to work on some stuff. These are all the same size holes and they're all full through. So I'm just dragging from left to right, selecting those, go to close, click again on pocket tool path. I also want those at 0.8 and also gonna let the passes stay at six. And then I'm gonna call those uh, 5 16 holes just for the sake of reference later. Full through, calculate, warns me, it's normal. Then I'm going to go to the inside only of these. This is a little more difficult. And that's why you want to, I want to, I like to zoom in. I'm going to click on the insides of those. I'm going to do the insides first. You could do it the other way around, I suppose, but I'm going to do the inside first, which is quarter inch, quarter, quarter. And by the way, I'm not selecting any of the stuff below. That's a similar template, but it has three holes instead of five. And I only want to run the five hole tenon right now, which is this, these five, these are actually peep holes. So now I can go to this I, and those are quarter inch holes. So when I, when I select on pocket tool path and this is PVC material. So when I go to point eight, even though it wants to do six passes, just to save time, I can go because it's a quarter inch bit going, making quarter inch holes. I, I change it to two passes. It just saves a little bit of machining time. By the way, I use auto hide. And then I'm going to say quarter inch full 
through. So I did that to calculate. It again warns me. Now I'm going to go to the outside of those. You have to be really watch carefully on those to make sure you just get the outsides, which I'm doing, right? And collecting, selecting all of those. So again, I'm not going down below here. So I've got just the outside. On this one though, instead of using this guy here, I'm going to use this one, Profile Toolpath, because there's no need to dig out the center of each of these holes. It's already been dug out. And then I only want those to go down 0.5. And, and then, so again, I can, because I know that the hole is already in there, I can go ahead and save myself a little time. I went to three passes on that because it doesn't, it doesn't have to bore out the center of these holes. It's already there. And then I'm st sticking to inside slash left. And then I don't need any tabs on that one. I have to drag down here. And then this is, uh, these are pegs, three eighths inch pegs at that 0.5 depth. Uh, that's just for reference purposes. And then uh, let's see, I've got this guy here. That's a, what I call a peephole. It allows me on the board on the template to see what's below it. I could have done this at the same time I did the other slots, but I like to keep it separate. So I just write peep, peep. Again, full through, just reminds me later. Calculate, again, it warns me. And then this last one here is, I'm gonna still stick an 11 and a quarter inch board into this machine, but I'm only going to, I only want five and a half inches of it. So where do I cut that? This little guy tells me exactly where to cut it. So I do a, this here, but this one I only take to point one, two, five. It's just deep enough to make the mark and allow the saw, the tooth of my chop saw to, to fit into it. If you look at some of my other videos, you'll see how I chop that by putting the tooth up against the left side and cutting it and then I might flip it and put the tooth against the other side. It basically gets rid of this center of quarter inch entirely and you end up with a perfect five and a half by five and a half. So this, this I call chop mark and that's at 0.125. That's it. I say calculate. And then from here I would select, make sure I select all of my tool paths. I do a preview. And just quickly looking, I've got the three slot or six slots full through. I have all of these holes with the double circles. There's a circle in the middle that's quarter inch that goes full through, but then there's a circle at three eighths inch that goes only to 0.5. Here's my partial through uh, chop saw cut. Uh, these are my all my full through holes. This is that full through peep. So I'm good to go on that. So I can go ahead and I can click on these guys, you know, all the whole group there close out of that, go to my icon here, save the tool path. And then this one, I, I think I already saved one. Uh, five hole only is what I did. And then I would say save. So that's how that goes. I typically would then go file, uh, save as, cause if I want to save this file and I would do like what I did there. And now that's saving the CRV file. The other one was the tap file. So that's how that would all work. I then go out to the shop. I do a, um, I go to my Windows Exp Windows Explorer, I guess it's called, and I go to my, this this is wherever that file is, Jigs and Template, that's my mounting tenon. Right here is my five only, the, excuse me, this one here, the five only tap, T-A-P. I right click it, I say copy. Then I go into, I have a USB drive in there. And then from there I do paste. It's probably going to warn me. Nope. Okay. I guess I hadn't saved that yet. So now I'm ready to go out into the shop with, I'm going to close out of this. And then as always, you should go down to your little mouse thing down there and eject. You want to tell it you want to eject. It's a safer thing to do. Of course it should warn me, but it normally warns me. It doesn't do that when I'm doing the screen capture. Otherwise, normally you get a warning down here that says, that it's okay to remove the USB drive, which I'll do. And then I'll walk out to the shop and actually make this template.